hang off the side and just come over the top. Yeah, just, <laughs> keep doing it, keep doing it. <laughs> yeah, Will's got to get in too. Practice to start? Yeah. 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 So, cheers, Hi. Kenny. Hi. 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 So, it, this is our first coffee, um, coffee of, the, of the day and podcast for Flow Martial Arts. I thought it'd be a really good thing to kind of start doing so that we could introduce um, the people that come to the gym and the coaches in particular for the members of the gym so that we can start to... Um, they can really get to know the people because yeah. I think parents who bring the children down um, and the, the adults that partake it down here in the martial arts um they don't actually know the level of ability that's actually down here yeah. and i think for a long time like me in particular as a relatively new you know beginner to jiu-jitsu um it's really interesting to know the amount of people that we've got down here and the skill and the level that we've got that we've got that are just training us on a on a daily basis particularly in jiu-jitsu and, and yourself so i thought the first podcast would be really good to have you interviewed so that people full of great ideas, me, aren't I? Hey? <laughs> <laughs> and I thought that it would be good to um, have the opportunity for us to just have a bit of a laugh and a bit of a chat, really, so that we can upload this and the people of the gym and the members of the gym and hopefully future members of the gym can love it, man. I think it's a great idea. I yeah. think as well we're going to get more professional with it. Yeah, as we go absolutely. And get more people in. Yeah, it would um, be really maybe good. Maybe a few at the same time. Yeah. So not all the pressure's on me. Anyway. Yeah, no, no, that's true. <laughs> and I think, you know, we've got an idea about what we're going to do and, and who we can interview like week to week um, yeah. and get people really interested in it and then put questions out to members who maybe want to like know it. a little bit more about the coaches. Yeah. Um, and I just think it's important, like, you know, our, I have spoken to a lot of beginners in particular who have turned around to me and said, um, you know, actually, I had no idea that that person, you know, competed yeah, at that yeah. level and trained at that level and trained with that person. And you know. Same with me. I didn't know Steve Hollister was uh, a yeah, karate, karate exactly. world champion. Yeah, stuff. world champion. They're the best guys, the guys that keep it quiet, not the yeah, guys that absolutely. have the whistles and bells. Look at me, look yeah. at me. And I think, you know, that's a perfect Which, example. You know, we'll get Steve on, on this podcast as well and we'll get him kind of chatting about his world titles and Steve stuff. Steve would be a good chat, yeah. So, yourself. Uh-huh. You haven't always done just jiu-jitsu, have you? I've not. You've done a bit of everything. I'm an amazing pool player. Amazing pool player, <laughs> yeah. Um, so I guess to start with, let's chat about um, like how you got into martial arts. Like How did that start? Like How old were you? Because um, it wasn't yeah. straight into jiu-jitsu, was it? No. You, you started different things, didn't you? Uh, as a kid, I guess. Um, I don't know why. I've always, I've always liked boxing and fighting and things like that. Yeah. Being a kid... Um, uh, a lot of my family or my uncles or my granddads, I guess, were they were all boxers. Okay. Um, um, I think some, some of them were pretty good. Uh, I guess that sort of just passed down through the, the gene pool. Yeah. Um, and did you used to go and watch them and things like that? No, I, I, I didn't really know them too well, if I'm honest. Um, that side of my family, but obviously my dad and his granddad and his yeah. dad and so his, his brother, they were, they were all like boxers, yeah. Um, but I didn't, I didn't know them that well. Um, I was just, they was a lot older by the time I, I came around. Mm. Um, but yeah, I guess that, that was maybe, I don't know, maybe it was just in the genes a little bit there. So but yeah. I remember, I always remember watching as a kid, uh, Mike Tyson fights. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why, but I always got like, even it's now, I can, monster, I can still, was at like probably five years old, I can remember certain points of where I was watching a Mike Tyson fight because everyone always made a big deal of him at the time. Yeah, sure. Um, that that was probably my very first taste of like combats, yeah, yeah. you know. Um, then, uh, so I always sort of played around a little bit with that. Um, but it was probably va when I got to about 10, 11 years old, I started watching uh, martial art films. Okay. Um, Jean-Claude Van Damme. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> no, <laughs> legs. Um, yeah. Blood sport. Yes. Yeah. I, so I, I got, I got, I'm a pretty obsessive guy, so I got, I guess, a little bit fanatical about it, and I wanted to learn how to do a bit of karate and kick. And so that's where you started, and you started in karate? Yeah. Uh, well, actually, no, I, I, I remember doing a judo, I remember my mum taking me to a judo class once. All right, okay. And I hated it. <laughs> They're really strict. 
good. They don't like being. Sh- they don't like people telling me what to do, man. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. Um, but I was really young then. But I think I was only like six. But I remember then. Yeah, my first real problem, like uh, lessons classes, so to speak. I, st- I started doing karate and uh, for a few years kickboxing, a little bit of uh, my Thai. So you did a bit of everything then. And Were you like in a particular gym that did everything? Or yeah, was it there like- was a g- uh, a guy that set up in. Um, Tavistock at the time because that's where I was from um, and he'd been doing it for years uh, so we just started off with him um, and just went from there really I just, I'd done that for about a good five years I got I got to a black belt in karate I guess okay that's a very um, whatever that means <laughs> you know what I mean it's very uh, it's very different branch offs of karate and, okay. and stuff so um in the, the day, I could, so kick, I, could kick, I could kick and punch. Do you know what I mean? I, yeah. I could. I, I was pretty. I was really flexible. I was better at like hold my leg up straight. So I was just obviously mimic Van Dam. That's mainly <laughs> where I probably learnt most of. And how stuff old from. were you when that happened? Uh, I've done that from the age of ten to fourteen or fifteen. Wow. So you black belt about? Yeah, I, young I was. Age. I was obsessed with that. Like wow. all day, every day. That's what I've done. God. I seem to have this weird thing with me. I've never been obsessed with being rich and making money. What was that about? <laughs> wish I was. Um, but so yeah, what that happened was then? So you got to that level. Uh, the, uh, so during uh, that time, sorry to interrupt, there was no jiu-jitsu around Never heard of it. Or... But, uh, so, so basically I'd done a little bit of other things as well. I'd done a little bit of Aikido at the same time and all that. All right, um, okay. I'm, I'm talking like a handful of classes, but I always remember in certain classes like that, we, they used to do like some sort of wrist lock or drop down to the floor, some variation of a grappling yeah, yeah. thing, so yeah. to speak. And I was fascinated by that. Um, and I do remember, because I used to get like martial art magazines. Yeah, yeah. And I do remember that there was like some advertisement for this cage fighting thing. I just remember it vividly in my head. Um, but then basically I, I stopped because I, my other hobby was at the time I used to play a lot of uh, snooker and pool and things like this. So okay, yeah. I stopped just to really get involved in that a lot more. Um, I, I just felt that with the karate side or, or the striking side, I always felt like if you got into a fight with somebody that's bigger or stronger, I even felt man like you're still intimidated. You're still like, you know, they grab hold of yeah, you and sure. stuff. Cause you, you know, you get into little fights at school and on your estate where you're brought up. Yeah. And you'd always feel that kind of, once someone's got hold of you, it's hard to do anything. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I ventured down playing snooker and pool, but it wasn't until probably four, five years later. Wow. Um, I, I don't know what I was doing. I was in some uh, video store and I remember seeing this this tape, it was a VHS tape of UFC 2. And I thought it was some kind of like wrestling thing. And I remember looking at it and reading on the back, saying no hold bars. And I, I thought, this can't be real. Yeah, but I, sure. So I just picked up anyway to take it home, watch it, see what it was about. Yeah. And then I remember watching it and I was like, seen Hoist Gracie yeah d- versus, destroying everyone well yeah I saw him and put Ken Shamrock and people like that and then I was like you know everyone thought these big guys were going to win and then and then Hoist Gracie come in and like yeah. whooped them and, wearing in and I was gi. like holy <laughs> shit yeah go learn some of that yeah yeah you know but there was nowhere that maybe up the country I don't know I didn't I was completely had no idea about it but I tried to look online no I didn't look online because we didn't have online back then but I tried to look around to see if there was any clubs or anything like that, but no, no. Tried to research it. And no just one knew about anything. it. No one knew done done no. anything about it. So. Well, even like the USC, I think back then USC too. They they well when the first one came in, they I don't think they even knew an awful no. lot about what was about to happen, did they? Because it was all the different martial arts all coming together. Yeah. And then Hoist just come in with his jiu-jitsu and just. Yeah. Can you imagine how magical it was for everyone. the guys that did do jiu-jitsu back then? Yeah. And nobody had a clue what it was. Unbelievable. How cool would that be? So good. You like have like a secret weapon? Yeah. <laughs> Just destroy him. <laughs> but I think it goes back to what you said as well. Like if somebody does grab you in a fight, you you have that moment of, oh crap! Like what do I do? Yeah. Because a lot of like, you know, street fights or school fights, you know, there might be a couple of pushing and shoving, but then then they fall to the floor. Yeah. So being able to look after yourself and address yourself in a self-defense side yeah. of things, you know, when, when they go to the floor, it's a whole different world, yeah. you know? Yeah. So nuts that we never figured that out, really, 
you know, mm. up until that point. Yeah, yeah, sure. Just goes to show how full of shit people are. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Because, like, you think about everybody that does martial arts and, and didn't understand or, or, or figure out that grappling was an important part of it. They must have never gone, got into a real fight in their life. Because yeah. how many times every, every fight you've ever got into, it's, you end up clinching. You end Absolutely. up grappling. Yeah. And at least 90% of the time. Yeah. You know, once it's one-on-one, obviously you get sucker punched or something that's different. But it's crazy. Or even if that does happen, how people don't analyze that mm. and look back and go, well, I'm, I'm doing kickboxing or boxing or whatever, but every time I got into a fight, I've been grabbed. Yeah, and sure. I've, I've not been able to do anything. Yeah. It's bizarre, isn't it? Yeah, they must absolutely. walk away from that, just making excuses for themselves. Oh yeah, but you know, if, if, if I let go, if I let my hands go, man. Yeah, sure. It's bizarre, but yeah. you know, if, if I caught him with that one lucky right hook. Yeah, and ultimately, it's just it's learning the whole of fighting, isn't it? It's just it's all about different ranges. You really think when people two two people get into a fight and they get angry at each other, they're just perpetually going to come at each other. Yeah. So they meet and grab. Yeah. They're you know? standing and trying to find the Yeah, they yeah. Don't, those first two swings don't hit, yeah, then sure. then it's uh, it's yeah. going to be a grapple, you know? But then you got the guys, like I was saying back then, that did know all this stuff. Mm. Must have walked around and felt like gods. Absolutely, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know? Being able to, you know, put your hand on me, you're going down. Yeah. It's crazy. I remember when I first started teaching... People come in wanting to learn jiu-jitsu, and I'm like, okay, what have you done or seen before? Nothing. Okay, have you seen any of the UFCs? No. It's like trying to teach somebody how to grapple from nothing. From nothing. It was tough. Yeah. But now everyone comes in, everyone has an idea what it's about, and it's so much easier now. I think um, we'll come back in a second to kind of where you were with your Hoist Gracie video, but the, um, the UFC 2 video, but... I think you're right. I think me particularly, my brother is like a big UFC fan. Me personally, I'm more of a boxing fan. So the, the jiu-jitsu, you know, the, 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 the kind of grappling element to that, mm. I didn't have a clue what it was. No. Didn't have a clue. I just saw some really cool stuff that they were doing on the floor. Mm. And I didn't understand the concept behind it and the, the skill level, you know, that, that's attached to it. But, I mean, we can come back to that in a minute. So... Um, you picked up your video and then you went home and watched it and thought, Jesus, who's yeah, this guy? Yeah, no, I'd done it. So basically, I just kept buying lots and I had literally a whole cupboard of UFC and MMA Well, you just kept videos. on buying it in magazines yeah, and stuff? Yeah, and then um, I, just, I was just trying to mimic the moves. Really? Play around with them, yeah. Did you have anyone that you would like get involved to help practice? Or yeah, you... there was a guy, I can't remember his name now, I'm terrible, but... Um, where I where I was from, um, we used to go to a gym together, you know, lifting weights and stuff. Um, and he was he was into it as well because he was he was into wrestling. Like he was oh, actually right, okay. you know, like WWF. Like he used to like do that locally. Oh right, okay. Yeah. So he he was a little bit into all that kind of stuff anyway. So we used to just play around and look at some of the moves and that. Um, you know, you always think, oh yeah, I got that. It's easy. Yeah, you know? sure. But I remember then he found a couple of years later. I think he found a school in Plymouth. They were doing uh, what they called Valley Tudo at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Valley Tudo was like the the first like you know, no hold bars. The that first was in MMA. Was that China or Japan or? Uh, Valley Tudo, uh, Brazil? that's Brazil, yeah, Brazil. Brazil. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we, that was the first thing I came to that had a little bit of grappling in it. Okay. Um, but it wasn't really. It was very rudimentary. And that's a, the, and a place in Plymouth. Would Plymouth, you? yeah. It was so how old were you then when this really started to kind of take your fancy and you started to get a little bit of? Um, I into think it? I was about twenty-four. Really? Yeah. Wow. I know. Obsessive, right? I know. So you progress. Not many people know that. So like, I didn't do any grappling until wow. I was about twenty-four. Twenty-four. Yeah. Jeez, man. Yeah. So basically, yeah, I done karate for a good four or five years with boxing, mm. a few striking sports, then went away and played a lot of snooker and pool for about four years, five years, and then, is that right? Maybe six years. And then came back and Jeez. started doing that. A little bit of Valley to Do. Wow, man. Yeah. So you're, you're 24 years old and you walked into your first official grappling. Yes. And you think you're a tough guy and you think you could do all these Black things. Karate, I've seen a few UFC boxing tapes. Boxing background, yeah. Yeah. And then, um, again, I mean, the guys I was training with, they're all probably white belts now, looking okay. back at uh, the white belts, you know. But so did that exist at the time when you walked into that place? Was it geese and belts or was it just... No, we just done no gi. I didn't, I'll be honest, I didn't really put a gi on until I was towards a brown belt. No way. Yeah, and I, I was always wow. no gi. Because I, 
the first thing that happened was like I started doing this. It, it was Valley Tudo, so really that was more like an MMA thing. So mm. basically, it was um, it was a very rudimentary grabbing the head. Okay. I didn't even know what shrimp was. They didn't know what shrimp was really. Right. Yeah, and and Thai boxing put together and really? some little rough Just like clinching and things yeah, like that. Yeah, and a little bit of basic takedowns. We more of a rugby take takedown. Right. You know what I mean? Um, it was very rudimentary. Um, the sport back then in the UK was very very underground non-existent almost right, okay. um, unless you know up the line it was a little bit more but then the further you go down into Plymouth in the country no one knew anything so the yeah, people sure. I trained with was a guy called Simon Holmes and he could have been very good he fought a guy called Alessio Sakara. Um, Alessio Sakara was in UFC for quite a while um, wow. and before that you know was, what did he fight him in? Uh, it was in Cage Cage Warriors I believe oh okay so it was like an MMA yeah, it was right in the early days like yeah, yeah. and he, he, he beat him he got beat up for like a good round or so, and then he was very. Simon, I always remember Simon was very. Um, uh, he had a very good perseverance, you know what I mean? Yeah. His stubbornness, and he kept pushing forward, and he beat him in the end. But I guess, hey, this is back in the early days. It was very limited in its technical knowledge of yeah, sure. what what you can and can't do in, on a technical Jeez. basis. But yeah, so that was my coach. So even though he didn't know much, but he was very good at like making you tough push okay. you through it was a bit of a spit and sawdust grinding yeah. mentality back then but it did make you tough you know Yeah. but I didn't know I didn't even know what a guillotine was or or a shrimp was until probably a year or a year and a half into my training so, so were I you had, there for a year and a half yeah I was there that? for a few years man it was it was at Saints at the time the place the place was called Saints and I had two friends that started um, or they started and became friends with them uh, called Glenn and Mark and they were brothers and they we used to all just train together it was all quite obsessed about it and then they went away to America for like six weeks or something because they wanted to go and learn some cool stuff from like a legit gym and at the time yeah Team Quest it was Team Quest in Oregon I believe Um, so So the two brothers just went off yeah they went there there. that's Ronnie Couture and Matt Linden and all these people Um, but they went there and then right around the corner from there there was a gym called Straight Blast Gym um, uh, run by a guy called Matt Thornton um, who's one of the co-founders, I believe, of SBG. Um, he, he set, uh, they went there most of the time. They didn't even go to Team Quest much after that. They went there because they learned so much good material. And I remember they had it on tapes so or they re- wrote all these wow. you know, things they learned down. They came back and we just went over it and over it and over it and over it. Really? And then we found out there was, um, uh, we got a few DVDs off them as well because they had instructionals and we went religi- like religious, I can't say the word, religiously over them Just over and over and escapes, escapes 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 really? and this is now moving more into the realms of jiu-jitsu jiu-jitsu now yeah so then I learned my shrimp and then I learned you know up to then all I really knew was a guillotine when I learned what a shrimp was and how it works it's like Jeez. it's like someone just give you a magic pill do you yeah. know what I mean um and then just progressed from there. And then we found out that there was an SBG in the UK run by Carl Townswell at the time in so Manchester. So SBG's a, a gym? It's a, so SBG's the organisation. Uh, it's like, you know... They oversee, uh, like a Yeah, they're, they're, they got an organisation like Conor Gracie McGregor Barra. and that's and under it. Yes, so there, yeah, there's okay. SBG Island. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. That's where Conor McGregor and guys are from. Um, so, yeah, I went to Manchester uh, to meet Carl. Um, wow. And probably went over the last few years, but went up there like handful of times over a space of a few years really um, Carl was a fantastic like coach um, great great guy fortunately he passed away like last year yeah. Um, but yeah I was under Carl for uh, up to up to until I got my brown belt wow um, so we've got a year and a half of where at that 24 years old of kind of that Valley Tudo like yeah grappling type non jujitsu stuff. Yeah. You got two brothers, uh, Mark and Glenn, who had gone over to America yeah. and come back with some jujitsu material. Yeah. Which at the time jujitsu was that like a known word? Was that a known kind of Yeah, thing, a little bit. Sport? I mean, that's, what, that's what I wanted to do. So obviously I know right. like the watch the hoist gracie and okay. Gracie's okay. Jiu-Jitsu and all that and that's what I wanted to learn but there was just nowhere to no. get it from unless you had you know good access to, to, to like London or somewhere like yeah, that. Yeah, okay. So. And then they've come back with this material, DVD type stuff, which you're yeah. kind of self-teaching. Yeah. And then 
that was what you're looking at, what, 25, 26? Oh, God, yeah. 27. Around, or about 25, I guess. Yeah. yeah. And then what happened from that point? Is that when they you made they made links with someone in Yeah, Manchester? so, yeah, we, we we were training a lot, and we were, we were getting pretty good. And then um, there was a guy that came down from, because the Plume's quite a heavy st- uh, student university kind yeah, of city. Yeah, sure. So we had a guy come down, Vinny, it was called, a um, little small guy, who'd already tra- trained quite a bit of jiu-jitsu, I think, I believe, in... Island SBG. All right, okay. Um, he came and trained with us, and that was a, my very, very first taste of someone that had jiu jitsu. Yeah, sure. And he was tiny. I think he was only a, like a good white belt. Really? Yeah. Wow. Um, and yeah, he, he whooped our asses. Did he? Yeah, and it, it like <laughs> it frustrated me so much. I just like I didn't get it, you know. Um, so have you been introduced to geese and belts and things like that? I knew like there was a gi, yeah, but I just. But you were you and your not as much. You preferred yeah. no gi. Yeah. 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 No, I preferred. I just I don't I didn't really I didn't really it wasn't that much of a thing at the time, you know. Like the okay. gi, I just wasn't exposed to it that much. Sure. I just everything I watched was like no gi MMA orientated. Okay. So you're just kind of training yeah, and just trying yeah. to get better through. Yeah, I'm just looking just at escapes, better. guillotines, rear naked yeah. chokes, arm bars, just, just simplistic stuff. But like, it was not gi orientated. I wasn't learning any obviously gi stuff. Okay. But um, I believe now that played dividends in, yeah, in my game. Sure. But um, I mean, you do say that a lot, don't you? Yeah, and it wasn't by design or anything like that. It was just luck. But now looking back at it, I'm like, actually, that that helped. That made a big difference. But yeah, and then when Vinny was training with us, that's when we really went to town on, like, okay, this is what this guy can do to us, and this is the stuff they learned from America, and we used to sift through it, and like, okay, so that would be what for that, and that, you'd use that to stop this. I remember in a space of probably a month or two months, uh, I started beating Vinny. Really? And just, wow. and that was then the magic bug, like, oh my God, like, there was so much to, like, understand and be methodical about technique, and it's not about horsepower you know yeah, what I mean it's sure. about doing the right thing at the right time um, and that was then the hook wow. I was like alright we've got to we want to get good at this like yeah. you know um, so when you're saying you become you know obsessed almost yeah. with, with the sport this yeah. new found love did you um what, what are we talking are we talking like from from dawn till dusk are we talking that's just what you yeah, just I, left I think I probably it's bizarre because the first few years there was very few people to train with so once every, you know, probably a t- couple times a week there'll be someone to train with. But then when me and Mark and Glenn got together more regularly, we started to train for a good, good couple of years quite hard, really? you know. Um, but if we were in, it would be for a good four hours, do you know Jeez. what I mean? But it is, but that wasn't every day, do you know what I mean? No, it was no. the days we could make it. But then it was, it was a time you're away from it. And as I always say this now, it's like homework, isn't it? You don't get always good while you're doing something. You get good when you're away from it. When you're not only recovering and relaxing from it, but also then when in your free time, you're, you're thinking about it a little bit, you mm-hmm. know, and you're trying to analyse things and put it put it into a... And understand what you're doing and exactly, things like that. Exactly, yeah, just yeah. trying to make sense of it. And I used to do that all the time. That's all, you know, I mean, I'd be in conversations with, you know, my girlfriend at the time or whoever it was, and I won't be listening to a thing. It's just this obsession. And they're just they're, they're, they're background noise like me, <laughs> and I'm just thinking about <laughs> I'm just thinking an armbar. Well, yeah. you look at it, I think yeah, yeah, yeah. Good armbar. Yeah, yeah. Like I, mean, your I arms to, flapping. I used to have conversations when I was chatting to people, or whatever, and I would just like whoop, I'd, I'd drift off, and I'd be thinking, oh, his posture's out there. <laughs> neck drops a little bit. If I, had oh, to I find him, myself doing that. If I had to attack him right now, I'd definitely be snapping that head down from <laughs> guillotine. He's a big guy as well. He ain't got control of his body. If he ain't got control of his head. Yeah, that's my. I could do some damage. <laughs> <laughs> some random guy walking in the street. Excuse me, turn around. Can I practice everything, my rear naked but it was everything was a pattern. Everything, everything like was to for jujitsu. Yeah, trying to figure it out all the time. Constantly, it was such a confusing puzzle at the time. I was like, I need to understand. And I think that it does come into that kind of obsessive thing. I think there's something about jujitsu that is like so if you really invest your time into it and you want to progress and learn the skills and the sports and what it offers, I yep. think it, it, do, it does take over because you are... Co- it's a constant thinking, isn't it? Yeah. It's a constant thinking. Yeah. Constantly it, I get bored very easily. I always have done. So, like, like I love I love snooker, I love pool. It's a very complex game. I got, I got bored because you get to a good level, it's just refining. Yeah. You can sort of say it about everything, but, like, um, karate boxing got good level 
and I, I got bored because it's then refined. But what I, what really intrigues me is the unknown and, and, and trying to figure out something you don't understand, a pattern or, or okay. And the good thing about jiu-jitsu is that you know, it's always changing. You know, I think John Danner says it best. It's like you're trying to get to an answer of an equation, or you know, like two plus two is four. Yeah. But with with jiu-jitsu, you get two plus two, and before you answer it, take away one plus six times yeah. five and you're constantly, constantly yeah you're, and it, the, not only in a live situation when you're rolling but and yeah. if i if you step away from the game for five months come back the the way it's played is going to change i bet you've seen it evolve just yes crazy time even at I'm like, not, a, like a, a good I, level i'm only like what 15 years now i've been doing this is some guys been doing this for so long yeah. it was it's funny when you, you get to a good level and you think like you know, you get even a black belt, and you're like, yeah, I know things now and all that. And you remember then your coach when you was a blue belt or a good blue belt that maybe you can almost beat, you know, a, a, a black belt because that can sure. happen. You know, you guys get older and stuff and you can beat your coach. And I used to try and tell you advice and you'd be like, yeah, 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 and you're like, I know that, I know that, you know. Yeah. But now I look back and I'm like, there's so many things they said it was, was golden advice and, yeah, you, and you just you didn't, sort of didn't realize it at the time. Yeah, yeah, because you, you believe you're something you're not. Yeah. And that's, that's a constant thing about jiu-jitsu that really really helps get rid of that yeah, you sure. know and but now i look back and i'm like there's there's things they said and i'm like oh man yeah they were so spot i just on. wish i had that yeah, yeah and yeah. Th that's the beautiful thing about jiu-jitsu man and i guess anything you invest a lot of time in it you become higher Do you think you've got to always uh, listen to the people that spent the time in i've been doing it for 15 years but there's guys that have been doing this for a lot longer yeah you know and they have some golden advice that you probably just can't comprehend when they tell you. Yeah, sure. Do you know what I mean? But this doesn't make sense to you, so it's yeah. hard to understand what they're saying. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I guess that's like, is there a level of kind of at, at where you are within your jiu-jitsu kind of lifespan, um, the level of maturity of tra at that training point, if that makes sense, so that you're not you're hearing something from your coach mm -hmm. that they are trying to get across to you and you may think actually yeah yeah that's not really relevant yeah. to the way I play but yeah. now you're a little bit you, you, you've you're got a lot more experience yeah I think so I mean some people come along and just pick up straight away in that sense well, they're very good listen to their coaches they just completely trust in what they say yeah. but most people aren't are they most people want to uh, or feel that they, that they know what's best for themselves yeah, sure and unfortunately, a lot of time you don't. And they're probably the ones to progress. Like it's slower. hard. It's hard, man. When you're when you're the guy in the picture, it's hard to see what's going on. Yeah. And you need someone that's gonna step back. You mm -hmm. know, it's like life problems. When you have problems in life, you don't see what's going on and what you're doing wrong. But then years later, you look back at it and you're like, oh my god. I think you have to be able to reflect. Yes. And I think that you have to be able to criticize yourself. Absolutely, and, and accept that criticism yes. as well. Comedians are great like this, right? Yeah. I always find comedians interesting because they're very. Uh, is it analytical? Is that yeah, the right yeah, word? Yeah. They, 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 they always talk about things. You're like, oh my god, yeah, that's true. But that's because they're very analytical in the sense that they sure. sit back and they really strip down. Take it. In. And they get it. They, they, they the reason they can tap into what you do is because most people do the same thing. So really, they're stripping themselves down. Yeah. And they're looking at what they do. And do they're like, God, I'm a fool yeah. there. I can make a joke out of that. Sure. And then you relate to it. It's the same with everything. But most people, they, they can't be this way. It's hard, you know, to let mm. go. It takes many, many hours of being pounded into dust and realizing you're a speck of shit yeah. in the universe. Yeah. No, no, you know? I get that. And, yeah. and once you accept to be that to accept and you're it. happy about that yeah. and you're comfortable with that, then there's only room for improvement. Yeah. And that that's the beautiful thing. That's one of the true beautiful things about jiu-jitsu grappling is there's no hiding. There's yeah. no lying. It was very, very, very hard yeah. to... You know, it's very hard to, um, if you really want to be good. Which is why it blows my mind when you see high-level guys that are still like, you know, douchebags essentially. Because if you're good at something, it should really like have done something to you as better as a better better in you as a Turn person. Because you, you have to strip yourself down mm. to become better and, and, and self-analyze yourself. Exactly. Yeah. And if you have, if you're still that douchebag, then you never really actually reach your full potential, in my opinion. Yeah, sure. You know. No, I appreciate. Yeah, I, I get that. Completely. I don't, I understand this because I was the I was the guy that come in and I just wanted to learn this because I wanted to, you know, yeah. beat beat everyone's ass. You know what I mean? Yeah. Be the toughest guy in the room and stuff. But along that journey, and like, everyone has issues and stuff as they're growing up, I guess. And but along that journey, you you learn. Well, for me, it, it taught me so much more about myself. Yeah. And that's the beautiful thing about jujitsu. Yeah, not not, not yeah. how many not yeah. how many medals you got. Not not 
no, who you beat and how many times no. you've got someone in arm bars. Yeah, at the end of the day, in 100 years time you're dead. No one cares. Yeah. No one cares. But what, what matters is the influence and the things you've done for the people along yeah, that sure. way, not for yourself, no. you know? I think it's true, you know, one of the signs down there about leave your ego at the door. Yeah. You know, because if you don't leave your ego, it's going to get checked at some point. Yeah. And, and you're going to stand out like a sore thumb. Yeah. I remember you know? that sign, first time I saw that sign, I think it was at John Kavanagh's gym in yeah. Ireland. I think that's it. It said, leave your shoes and egos at the door. Yeah. I always remember it. I was it's like, great. That's cool. I like yeah. that. So, but I didn't understand it until 10 years until later. Until 10 years later. <laughs> <laughs> High level belt. Um, so we've established kind of the, the two brothers that have helped you, like Mark and Glenn, like you were training together and yeah. you were like developing each other's game and moving yes. up through the ranks. And then it got to a point where um, you, you, you said you're about 25 and then this, this guy came down from Plymouth and was doing some training with you, um, like a good white belt yeah. at the time. Yeah. Then you learned some more skills and started to develop it from them. So where did it kind of really take off for you? Like, uh, so okay, so that, I'll, give you went, you, I'll give you a quick overview. You so weren't just then, training in Plymouth, were you? No, You've, well, yeah, that was all I'd done. At I, the time? Yeah, and, um, then, and then now and again, like a couple times a year, say I went up to Manchester or yeah. Carl. Might have stayed there for a few days or a week. Um, you know, that's where I got graded. Um, Carl was a great guy. I always learned not so much techniques. I never, I never like obviously little bits. You always, you're always picking techniques up. It's so, so irrelevant that a coach comes along and teaches you this technique, that technique. Yeah, it's sure. great. You can get that on YouTube these days. Do you know what I mean? It's it's the mindset they give you, the approach they give you, the yeah. things, that, the experience they give you. Like we were talking about just a minute ago, that you cannot, you cannot get that from anywhere else. Do you yeah. know what I mean? You, you cannot substitute that for anything sure. um, having the right mindset and the, and, and, and the right approach is what's going to excel you yeah. um, so that's what Carl was good at he was good at teaching you how to be a, your own coach essentially yeah. um, so I, would, I could leave there come back home and I'd have whatever I'm working on I could have a completely different approach to how I do it yeah, sure. a completely different understanding which would help improve me massively so I'd done that all the way up to I got to to brown belt, and like I said, I never really put the gi on. I, mm. I, I until I was a brown belt, I, I used to just go up there and I used to just put the gi on. But I, I'm, I'm oh kidding. really? <laughs> <laughs> but I, I understood the the fundamentals of, of movements and, and stuff, yeah, sure. and they're always generally the same. You have a few grips extra and stuff, but. So when you were in Plymouth, were you still training at, you said Saints, is that what it was called? Saints it was called, yeah. So you were training there all the way up until? Uh, Saints, uh, they shut down, and then I sort of, I can't remember the dates and times, but uh, I remember Saints after a few years, four years, maybe or three years, they mm. shut down. I think I was a, a brown belt then at the time, and I went and set my own little gym up Okay. Um, for a while. But it is at that time, um, when I first went to Manchester, I met Gunnar Nelson. Yeah, okay, so, I want to come on So that. with Gunnar Nelson, basically, generally this is how I always remember it, is we sort of work through the belts together at SPG. Um, so when, you know he got his. Boot. So Manchester was an SPG. Manchester based. and also Ireland. Right. Okay. Um, so he'd be in Ireland a lot more. I'd, I'd be at Manchester, but sometimes with Manchester he'd be there. Okay. And we always we always we always got on. We clicked straight away. We become good friends. Um, or up to today, we're still good friends. And he, we went for the belts very similar. Like he got his blue belt at the same time as me, roughly in uh, purple brown. But every time we met up, it'd be like maybe once a year or something, we'd meet up. And, and then every time we rolled, it was like a mirror image of each other. Really? Because we were both B, big BJ Penn fans. Okay. Massive. So he had a similar game and vice versa. Um, so we were around about the same level. But then he went away to New York. He, he went to Henzo Gracie's for, for about a year, I believe. Got the T-shirt on. Yes. Yeah. Representing. <laughs> um, he went to, to that, and um, I remember after about a year he came back, and we rolled, and he was a whole different really? level. Wow. Nothing I experienced really until that point. Wow. Uh, at all. And it, you know how it is. You think you're the best thing going. No one's yeah. ever really challenged you, I guess. But And he, he rolled, I rolled with him, and I was like, oh, my God. Yeah. He had just gone. What have you taken? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and how long had he been there in he, in America? He had been there uh, about a year, I believe. Wow. Yeah. So, so, so he's twelve months. And right. Just gone. So, so we progressed really quickly for the up to brown belt. I think yeah. Around about three years. So you got your brown belt in three years. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Man. Right. 
that that that's nothing special about me. There's no, no that's having good people around yeah. you and, and giving you a good mindset and putting and putting the work in. If you're if you, put, if you have a correct mindset and you're passionate and you put the work in, yeah, you, you can you get can, you can achieve things. Do you know what I yeah, mean? Sure. Like whatever it is. Um, yeah. Taking the mental. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and um, so then he went away, come back, and he, yeah, he was like phenomenal. So he obviously went to Henzo's with that same mindset and just absorbed everything. Yeah, I bet. You know what I mean? Um, and had a lot of good people to train with as well. So I had to get me some of that. I was going to say, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So off to New York I went. Uh, wow. And I was over there. And you flew, did you go with him with Gunnar Nelson? Yeah, well, I met him over there, and then he oh, left wow. me there on the first day and went back home. <laughs> And dropped me off in the middle of New York, and I don't have a clue. I've, listen, I'm a little country bumpkin from Tavistock, and you just dumped me off in the, the middle, middle of New York. New York. So, what are we talking now? We're talking, uh, what, 28, 29? God, uh, 2009, I think. Wow, man. I think. Um, so, yeah, I, I stuck there for about a year. Off and on. And you're training at Hendel's for the year? Yeah. So, it was literally every day, just lived and breathed jiu jitsu at Hendel's? Every day, break my Jeez, body. Man. Yeah. And that's uh, John Danaher was there John as well. John Danaher, I didn't start training with him for f until a few months in, really. Uh, everyone kept saying, train with he John. He was there, yeah? John was... Uh, was he a black... He must have been a black man yeah, at yeah, the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he had the long hair then. He looked like... Robin I've Williams. seen pictures of him with the long hair, yeah. <laughs> Did he wear his rash guard? Yeah. yeah he, lives <laughs> in that. he was born with that rash guard. <laughs> um, and then, um, yeah, so that, that was it. And then, and I'll be honest, I, I got tough there hmm. and, and whatnot. But it wasn't until I came back and I had just my blue and white belts to train with. Mm. And when I came back, that is when I started improving. Really? Massively. Like, wow. And it was from it was from chats I had with, like, I, so I, but when I lived over there, uh, after a while, I stayed with a guy called Eric Owens, who is the uh, owner, runner of Mushin Gym uh, in New York. Right, okay. He was one of John Danhas and Henzo's top boys um, okay. and set up his own thing. Um, so I stayed and lived with him for a while. And so he was like a big mentor to me for that whole you know, eight months that wow. I was there. Um, so did you go over there knowing No, him I didn't know or? him until So how did you... Gunny was friends with them all. And, and that's I, how he I linked you I just hung in. with them, yeah. Right, and then okay. we just became friends. I was staying in a place called Harlem at the time. <laughs> yeah. <I heard laughs> that, yeah. And uh, I didn't have a clue. Harlem <laughs> was like, it's fine, sounds cool. Um and I was told, yeah, you don't want to be hanging yeah. around there. I remember... You're a brown belt. I never mate. stayed there. I'd, I'd leave the place in the morning and then come back late at night. And I remember each time i come late at night, it was just like these gangs on corners and stuff. Yeah, I remember. And uh, I remember... It's got a bit know, of a rep, isn't it? Yeah, they, they didn't like us white folks there. <laughs> <laughs> Especially like white English boy. But I didn't have a clue, you know. So I remember coming up to the uh, underground sometimes and then there would be flashing blue lights one night and I was like wow there's like blue lights everywhere and then the whole block had been cornered off for some kind of shooting oh drive by God, thing wow. and I just remember each night I had about two blocks to walk to get to my hostel and I like like when you were like pretend I had pretended to have my earphones in but I didn't have yeah. nothing on and I was like like my spidey theory. senses are <laughs> everywhere and I was like shit I could get out of it but Eric said you can't stay there so I end up staying at Eric's and um, bless him um, a solid guy reminds me a lot of Carl in a lot of ways mm. a super nice guy um, very very friendly very very giving you know um, but a, a purist is he a black belt? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. But a purist, a very straight-talking guy. He's no, no beating around the bush. And yeah. I like people like that. You yeah, know sure. where you stand. Just straight talking. You trust them. Um, and I learned a lot from him, man. A, a massive a lot, a massive lot, a massive, massive amount. Lot, yeah. um, you know. And basically, long story short, is that I remember one time I was doing the morning class. But I was lucky enough to get into the competition class at Henzo's. It was all like black belt killers world champions and whatnot just tough tough jiu-jitsu players I'd do that in the morning then I'd train at John's class I believe it was at the afternoon and then I'd train with Eric or someone in the evening that's three sessions it's basically it started killing me like yeah. it was just getting too it's much intense, for me man. and it was mainly that morning session it was just like really? a war zone oh, because be like, of the, the high was, level in the morning yeah it was like a scene at a platoon every day you know what I mean like <laughs> you don't understand you weren't there man <laughs> people walking out with like <laughs> arms hanging yeah, up and yeah stuff. they'd be dragging it carrying his brother <laughs> over the shoulder like and, and and it was just getting too much because it was like Eric always said to me, and then this still rings home today on so many levels, is that he says, you only have so much gunpowder to burn. 
be wise how you and how you burn it. And yeah, sure. and basically, I said to him, man, I said it's getting too much. I'd wake up and I didn't feel like doing this anymore yeah. and training this hard. And he said, don't. He said, go into tomorrow. He said, this is a long conversation. I'm short in it, but basically, the crux of the conversation was he said, listen, go in tomorrow and just turn off, relax. If somebody wants to pass your guard that much, let them. Let them, yeah. Let them. What's going to happen? They're in side control. Mm. You've got to learn how to defend yourself there anyway. You know, we can never let someone get to side control. So he's kind of changing your mindset. Starting to it. change my mindset and yeah. I, because I was so tired and exhausted of it at the time. So I remember, and I won't say the names and that, but I was rolling with this guy and it was such a tough roll. It'd always be like, he's nearly passing them, fighting, hell Mary, he's stopping passing. And I remember, and these were tough roles. Uh, and again, I will not mention names, but they were good guys. And, mm. and I remember he was trying to pass. And I was, the very next day, I was in that same position. And I just remember what Eric said. And I was like, fuck it, I'm turning off. Mm. And I instantly relaxed. And Eric, I always remember, Eric said, you start to see things in slow motion. Obviously, yeah. didn't mean it literally. No, but, but yeah. I turned off and relaxed. And he passed. And I remember as this guy passed, I was like, holy shit. I just seen a hole, the, a gap that he's leaving. He's not, he's not checking the hip or something. And as I was relaxed, I just whoop, I brought my knee in. Yeah. Okay. And what it was is that now I'm relaxed. I'm not tunnel visioned. I'm yeah. seeing what's going on. Yeah, yeah. I'm breathing. I'm more relaxed. I'm more efficient. My brain's working quicker. And that's how I see things in sleep. It feels like you see things in slow motion once yeah, you start sure. to relax. The first time you start to do that. It's like you start to see all the holes they're making yeah. that you're not capitalizing on because you're too hell bent on doing what you want to do. Sure. And whoop, I brought my guard back in. And literally from that day on, day on he never passed my guard again. Wow. And literally from that day on, it's not long after I moved back to England, I started to realize less is more. Yeah, sure. And he said that the biggest misconceptions humans ever have is that more is better. And I just started doing less to achieve the same outcome. Yeah. And with the white belts and blue belts, what you essentially can do, obviously you can beat them, you know? But you're now, you've now got training partners that you can drill with, almost like you're, you're sparring with them, but it's almost like a drill. Yeah, do you know what I mean? you're so also making them better. Making them better, but you, you know, in, on, on a selfish perspective, it's like, I could roll these and I should just turn off and relax and almost act like yeah, I'm drunk sure. or, or, or yeah, whatever, half yeah. asleep, and see if I can get the same outcomes that I normally have so things I'm really good at I'm just getting efficiently better at and yeah. if I'm trying something new then I can sort of pull it off and like maybe force it a little bit more mm. until it becomes technically more efficient again and wow. it was from that point onwards in, in a space of I remember I rolled with Gunny after about six eight months of training it back home and he was I remember him, him saying what the hell have you been doing Yeah. and I was like just you just adapted your adapted the training yeah. it's not I think Joe Rogan might, I didn't, I never really read things. I see people post things, so I like half read it and then respond to it <laughs> just to get a bite on, on Facebook. But I, I, I think Joe Rogan might have talked about this the other day or it might have been John Dan, I can't remember. But if you want to get good, you know, roll with some white and blue belts and put that time in there. It's not just yeah. about you going iron on iron, so to speak, to fight. Yeah. It's just because you're fighting black belts constantly is not always the best thing for you. Because no. you never get a chance to try anything out. Yeah, and yeah, with so yeah, many sure. steps ahead, you're just getting drowned. Yeah. You need to build up your game. Yeah. You need to work on that. I mean, it's like, it's like, well, like why we do slow rolling? Mm. Slow rolling is so important. Not only to loosen up, warm up, get, get a good feel, get your breathing on time. It, it's important to just like calm everything down, take the physical attribute out of it, take the aggression and the, the ego out of it and the win, and yeah. you're just trying to move because you're trying to learn how to build up movements and, I think and that's things a really together. Good point. And, and, and that's the same with everything. It's like you don't, you don't take your first driving lesson and he tells you to sit in the car, strap your belt on, look, ch tells you all the things with the mirrors and what everything does, and he goes, Are you ready to move? Yeah, let's do this one at 100. Yeah, It'll be fine. Sure. <laughs> you, who does that? It, it doesn't yeah. happen. No. But yet we seem to think we can do that yeah. when we train with anything else, yeah, especially yeah. in the ego sport of, of, of combat. Yeah, you know, yeah. Take your time, build it up in a methodical way and, and get your base right, get, get all those foundations right. I mean, it help, the, what's one of the most important things? Breathing. Mm. But yet no one even focuses or figures, talks about that yeah. too much. You know, I think Hickson talks about it a lot, but... Learn to slow roll. You slowly build that pace up, get the movements right, get your understanding, get your thinking right, get your breathing right. These are foundational like, things that you need. Go hit a punch bag for 10 seconds and hold your breath. You know what I mean? Yeah. See what happens. So if, if you get guys at a high level, 
but they're not breathing correctly, you know, how much more efficient they'd be if they knew how to breathe. And I think that's really key because obviously you, 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 you're a lot of the training that we do and we slow roll and things like that, especially for beginners, you, you know, it, it's really easy to see and a hundred percent, I, I did it. You, you don't really understand it. You get an opportunity for the first time to have a, have a roll. And then all of a sudden you, you don't understand the concept behind the slow roll and the yeah. methodical approach to it. Mm. So all of a sudden it's a little bit rushed and hard. Yeah. And, uh, and like you said, you don't get your breathing, you don't get any of that involved. So the sooner I, I learned that really quickly, yes. it, it, it allowed Massive me to Massive reason why that one-on-one -on -one class is there. Um, uh, obviously we cover fundamental things, basic bits, but I'm, I don't really care what they learn there in mm. the sense of technical things. I don't care. That class is there to make sure people get the right mindset to start with mm -hmm. make sure they become a good training partner for mm -hmm. themselves and each other make sure it's all about helping each other and that's massive because it's all about creating the right environment yeah sure if you don't have the right environment forget it mm -hmm. forget it you just constantly you're trying to you're trying to build a house on dodgy foundations yeah you know, um, it's very hard to have a good environment when everyone wants to kill each other or, yeah, or, or, or people don't get on. And there's egos flying egos around. Egos flying it's around. It's all about, it's it? all about themselves and what mm. they can get out of it. Yeah. You know, it's the wrong attitude, man. If you, you, this is an individual fight sport, but you need a team behind you. You need yeah. a, you need that unity. And, and, you have and I think you know, hats off to yourself because um, in the what 60, 17 months that I've been here at the gym and, and I know a lot of the, the people here everyone here the atmosphere is fantastic you know the, the people the way people train the, the approach that people have not just in the jiu jitsu but in the judo in the, the, the boxing the kickboxing yeah. it, it's a real nice friendly environment yeah. that people already feel welcome yeah. when they come in that's the greatest thing and it's I'm, a great so thing. I'm more proud of that than it. I don't yeah. I will never care from this day to the next about how many titles yeah, the gym Sure. wins and that what is important to me is a, about people learn true martial arts and yeah. learning that this is about bettering yourself yeah not just about how many things you can get out no, of something agree, it's about you bettering yourself yeah and, and you need people around you and every, when everyone's on that same page yeah you create a unity a bond with each other when you're trying to better yourself as a person mm. you don't even realize it start with you come and you want to do this and this and this but in the end you realize this is something that gives you a a blueprint of how to become a better person, yeah. you know, for yourself. Mm. Um, and everyone's there, you know, you're all in there sweating your asses off. It's tough and you're all on that same boat. You, yeah. you create a good bond. Definitely. It's everything. And it's so important that you get that right from day one because the hardest guys that I have to coach are really the guys that came to me halfway through their training. Different it, mindsets. Different mindsets because it's like, it's like a canvas that's empty. You can do your picture, but when a canvas already has a picture on it, yeah, you've yeah. got to clean it off, and got it, yeah, got it's yeah. never going to be is is and it pure. Change you know? to the way that you want it yeah. to be done. Yeah, it's yeah. very hard for them. I mean, it's like like say you have a good brown belt, and he has he's missing some fundamental things and needs to relax more than that. Yeah. You've got to tell that guy, listen, you have to go back and work on some found fundamental things and, and improve your game to take it to the next level because yeah. you're never going to get any further. Or well, it's going to be very hard or slow. You've got to tell them to take away all the things they do that make them successful now in, sure. in training or in rolling. It's very hard for them to do that because they've got to now accept, okay, now I need to work on these fundamental things, throw the rest of it away whilst I train. Mm -hmm. If you're working on anything new, you're going to get beat. That's it. You know what I mean? You, you're not going to be successful straight off the bat. Mm -hmm. You have to work on it. Yeah, so absolutely. now blue belts and purple belts got to beat them. Yeah. It's very hard to draw that back off someone. Yeah. So that's why the environment's so important. You know that we're all there to help each other. I think it's important. That's yeah. why I get so like uh, agitated and annoyed when uh, there is someone that comes in with that bad mindset, and yeah. I don't put up with it. No. Uh, I just point blank don't put up. And with I, it. and I think that's the best way. And I think you know the, even the higher you go, the the the, the 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 more experienced people to the higher higher people is it's important sometimes to have your ego checked. By someone not as experienced as you, yeah. And if that happens, maybe one in a hundred rolls, you know, you should embrace that. Yeah. I think yeah. and be like, oh, how did that happen? What yeah. did I do wrong? Yeah. And then be that self-critical and analyze your what you did wrong for that split moment in time to yeah. to get tapped or to get mounted or have your guard passed or something like that. Because I do believe that in order for you to, if that never happens to you, 
then you're just going to constantly walk around thinking you're yeah, Superman. Exactly. And you're going to be very unhappy when you enter a tournament. You ha- I always tell my girl, whatever. like, I always say, like, why do we fall over? Cause, so we can get back up. Absolutely. Again. Yeah. And that, that, so that's part of life learning, lesson. isn't it? You don't see babies, like, trying to learn to walk and they fall over and say, yeah, fuck this. They'll never do me. it again. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? They, yeah. they get up and they keep going and they keep going and they figure it out Definitely. and they, they work it out. Um, the problem is, as we grow up, we, we do create these little bubbles of egos and fake personas of ourselves yeah. and things we think we are and that needs to be stripped away yeah that's why kids develop so well they don't yeah. have any preconceived ideas of what they should be or yeah. think they are yeah they're just themselves and then it just happens yeah and they're a blank canvas upon which you build up yeah. on you know i think it's great watching the kids classes like you know th- just the way that they move and their, their general body and yeah, stuff allows amazing, them to right? create. They instantly figure it they out. Just do it. Yeah, you know. And I do my, my little um, little girl Lily when you know she's walking now, but she tr- used to try and get up. Yeah. Me being mean, but you watch them how they bridge. They have the perfect Definitely. bridge and roll. Yeah, they, yeah. You, I try to hold her down when she's trying to get up once. And she's trying to get up like this, and I was pushing her shoulder. And she's like, ah, 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 and then she done pulled her front leg back, and this is basically a technical get up. Yeah. And I'm like. <laughs> Yeah. Girl. Are you gonna try and get her into it? Yeah, she, I think she wants to already, man. <laughs> she's always there trying to jump on the mat, trying yeah. to drag her off. Uh, she's. They've got two girls. Obviously, we've got Maya that's ten and Lily that's one. Maya's like very placidly back, kind of shy, passive aggressive, passive aggressive yeah. style. She's very. Really, she wants past her for years. Like that'll play dividends later in the game. I think. Yeah. Whereas Lily is more like gonna be like that. Bulldozer. <laughs> but it'll be interesting to see, Mum. Brilliant. So we, um, you come back from Henzo's. You, you've kind of shot up. It's mine, look. You see that? Yeah. Two stripes. And uh, we're going to come <laughs> into this now. So oh, here we go. You, you got your brown belt. Um, who, who gave you your belt? Okay, so I'll go through this because yeah. uh, Carl Townsend gave me all my belts up to brown belt. Okay. SBG. Okay, that's. And that's when you were travelling up to Manchester. Yeah, my, that's where my blood is. You know, yeah. that that's who, who, who I am. That's my foundation of, my, of everything. Right to this day, a lot, most of the things I do is that same kind of process and mindset. Um, and a big part of it is Eric Owens and his mindset as well. But then, um, Carl, Carl, without getting into it, Carl, mm. Carl dis- disappeared. He, he he left, and from what I heard at the time from guys that spoke to us, that he he was done with it. He wasn't coming okay. back. That was around about the same time that. I was um, asked if I wanted to go to New York. Okay. So um, I, at the time, I messaged Carl um, about the situation and asked him for advice. He sort of went off the radar. He was like, wow. yeah, I think he had some things going on. So I went to to Henzo's, and I was there for a year under them and John. Um, and I was going to stay there for a lot longer, to be honest. Um, but my daughter at the time, she got ill, and she was diagnosed with... Um, arthritis juvenile arthritis okay and this was just before i was training actually to do the worlds wow. um 2010 i think um so from there it was essentially like i came back home mm. when i got my brown belt normally at sbg you you normally on the brown belt for a year i think max so you were brown belt at Hen- when you went to Hen- 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 the brown belt yeah. Fine, yeah but i um i remember then as a brown belt uh, in my head I rolled, that was the first time I rolled with a guy called Bradley with Steamer. Um, mm. He went done a seminar and I rolled with him. Bit of a legend. Yeah, and that was the first time, obviously Gunny was very good as well, but that, that was a, like a legit yeah. multiple time world champion. And I rolled with him and I, I felt like I was a little child. I bet. Yeah, and... So how never did that come about? How did Bradley... Uh, he was doing a seminar, so oh, I did okay, a seminar. Okay. But uh, I, at that point then, I was like, okay... I do not want my black belt. I do not want my black belt until I can at least handle or hang in some realm with someone yeah, that sure. could not just be like That's treated like I was absolutely, nothing. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I went to work. I, so I, I left the SBG then um, and I went to work just, just working, training, training, training. I wasn't really caring about who I was under or anything like that. I just wanted to train at the best places and learn as much as I could. Was this around the, the country or uh, No, around just the at Henzo's. Oh, just Henzo's at Henzo's, and right. all that. Um, so, But it's so diverse at Henzo's. There's so many yeah. people come in and out, and so many good guys. Oh, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I was there, and I was just training my butt off. And then when I came back about a year later, um, I didn't have a coach or anything like that. Um, 
I wasn't. I wasn't. To be honest, I was. My head wasn't even in the space of finding a coach. I didn't care. I was a brown belt, and I would have happily stayed at a brown belt. I, I was improving so much, and I, when you truly know how much better you're getting, yeah. you don't. Uh, for me, anyway, that around my belt. Yeah, this doesn't, it doesn't matter, does mean it? Nothing no, to I me. agree. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. I'd rather be the white belt tapping out black Absolutely. belts than a yeah, black yeah. belt that can't do anything. Completely you know get I mean? that. So, I kept just working, and then I end up um, going to a Braleo seminar, another one, because I trained with him a few times at Henzo's because he's okay. always there as well. And he's always, Bradley was cool as hell, man. I've always got on really well with him. Every time I met up, I uh, had, had a good training session with him. He's always in, invited me into things and stuff. So he, he gave me my black belt. Um, I rolled with him and he gave me my black belt. So wow. I always remember when I got it, it was like everyone said, oh, you look like the most unhappiest guy that ever got a black belt. <laughs> it wasn't, that wasn't, that one, I just finished training with him. So I was absolutely exhausted. <laughs> um, but two, it was like, you know, I don't want to sound like arrogant or cocky about this, but I worked so hard for four years as a brown belt, yeah. and, I, and I mean genuinely hard, that I knew that was good now. So it wasn't like a big surprise. Yeah, sure. Does that make I know sense? What you mean. It was, yeah. I was no, so I, over I the moon that. grateful, and it, yeah. I couldn't have been happy to get it off someone that was so high up in the jiu-jitsu yeah. world, and someone I actually looked up to a lot, and, and, and I used to watch a lot of his matches and used to mimic a lot of things he'd done so I couldn't have wished to have got it from anyone yeah. more you know um, so I wasn't I wasn't happy at all or anything like that no I just like it's just it's sort of like to me a natural process now and I was going to say I guess from the first time you rolled with him and you said actually I'm I'm not ready for a black belt like, I didn't I need want to it be. Then. So yeah. that's what I'm saying. So you had worked that hard yeah. to get to Genuine that point. Genuine work. Do you know what I mean? You've seen you, that progression. You know, like if you, if, again, it's all about self criticizing yourself and yeah, really analyzing man. yourself. That's on a bad level, like of, oh, I'm going to find what's wrong with me. But also, you can also acknowledge when you know. Sure. Like you're doing good things for yourself. Yeah. It's like when people come to you and say, oh, am I getting any better? I would say, well, no, <laughs> because you know when you're getting better. Yeah. At least you should. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, you should, you, you should know when you're generally that. getting better. Yeah, sure. Okay. So, yeah, that was it. And then he gave me a black belt. So I was essentially um, on the Braleo for a few years. So how did he give it to you? As in, like, it, it, did he just, did he have a bag no, of black belts at he a didn't, seminar? No, no. So we done a seminar. We, did, we rolled. And then he come out and he was, uh, from what I heard, he was looking for borrow a belt and there was like only an Aikido black belt hanging around <laughs> I think it was an Aikido one so he gave you so that it I was, still have it it was already pre-planned that you were going to get it on no, that I day no don't, I, well, I don't know I don't know I don't know if it's pre-planned or no I don't think it was because he would have had a black belt on him that's true so he just guess, thought he's ready yeah yeah I, think, I went up to Braleo's a few times to help him and a few other guys train and I remember rolling with a few of them then I was doing alright you know what I mean But well he must have seen the progression yeah from that first roll that you had where he threw you around like a kid to then, yeah, you know, to, to be given a well, black belt he, by he, him he, 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 he put the fire crack up my ass, man, because yeah. I was like, I'm not having that. Yeah, sure. <laughs> like, yeah, I remember he, you know, when he pinned you and the side control so well, heavy. I read, I heard on other, like, podcasts and stuff that he's meant to have the worst side control oh, really? ever. Like, the pressure. Yeah, so he, Everyone says it. So when I do that, that's where I got it, it from. It from yeah. I'm like, okay, that, that, that was it. You Cheers. know what I mean? So I think I've tapped, like, 100 times to your... Um, yeah. It's such an Stupid. easy move. Why do more though when you Shoulder can do pressure. less? It's ridiculous. <laughs> but I, so yeah, that was it, man. And then, but now I'm under um, Gordo, um, okay. Ben, ben Popton. Popton. Yeah. yeah okay. So a big okay. ass shout out to them. Uh, it's, it's complicated and I, I don't want to tread on like territory that I don't want to get involved no, in really. Yeah. But it's a lot of politics in jiu-jitsu, I believe. And um, basically, um, I wasn't, going to be Braleo was when he gave me his black belt he was like a, under he was Gracie Baja but he had his own name of Braleo yes, Steve. Yeah, yeah. Um, but then I think he he I don't really follow the scene too mm, much so yeah. I never know what really really is going on I just like to train um, maybe that's wrong of me but you know it's the training and, the way and, you are. and I believe that Braleo stopped his name under his gym and then just became completely Gracie Baja okay um that's cool that's, that's his thing that, that's up to them um but I didn't fully agree with all the things that Gracie Baja do. Okay. I mean, I'm, I'm from SBG. It's so the polar opposite to yeah, that. Yeah, sure, yeah. yeah. Um, and that's my foundation. Well, people are allowed their opinions. Yeah, and that's my foundation. And, and I just didn't... I don't, I don't like... I feel, I feel awkward when you have, like, gyms or whatever, and they have lots of umbrella gyms. Do you know what I mean? And I just feel like 
Yeah. Your gym is your gym. Yeah. I have a few guys that I help out, like North Devon BJJ. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, Taunton yeah. uh, gym. Some really good fighters there. Yeah, and I don't, I don't ask for anything back in that respect. I just go out there, I help them as much as I can. As long as I can get a good word out and put another gym in an, on the right path, that's yeah. all I care about. Do you mm-hmm. know what I mean? And... I don't expect them to be under like Kenny Baker BJJ or you know no, Flow sure. Jiu Jitsu or anything like that. I, I don't care for that stuff. Um, I'm loyal to the people that help me yeah. and, and have done things to help me, not to someone I've never met. It just, I just find that bizarre. It's just the way I am. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, he went under Grace Barr. I wasn't fully like into all that. Um, so I, I think we just. I don't really know even know how the stripes and the belt thing work, but I know I'd been a black belt for. <laughs> Jesus, uh, six, seven, seven years or so. So wow. I knew I, I should have. I got to a point now. I'm running the gym, so, so I need to. You've been a black belt nearly as long as you were a white to brown yes. belt. Yes, <laughs> yes. Never thought about that. So white to brown belt. Yes. And that you've nearly been a yeah. black belt for that length of time. Cheers, man. Make me feel old. That's, I didn't think about that. Yeah. That's really. That's amazing. Yeah. That's pretty cool, actually, isn't it? That's really cool. I'm amazing, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> but, so it got to the point where now I've got my gym and I, there's a lot of guys now like like Ryan at the time. I needed to be at a black belt then, but you can't do it in jiu-jitsu so unless Ryan you have Honeyman. so many stripes and yeah. all this. Yeah, he's going to be on the show. Yes, no, cool. Show, it's a show. It's a show. <laughs> he's, he's a little bit more sophisticated than me, but <laughs> 10 times more boring. <laughs> Um, but and it's yeah. your first black belt she's my first black belt but so basically uh, I did message um, Brallo and that, but I didn't really know what was going on at the time I didn't understand it um, I, I just think they want to go down the route of okay you have to be Gracie Baha okay. and, and I, I understand that that's full, fully like, understandable um, but this the, what I started uh, Simon McGovern actually put me on to the Ben Popperton and the Gordo thing he's was, one of the first lot, British yeah, black belts yeah I don't again I don't follow the scene yeah, so I don't really I, know too I much I think but he's one of the first British black belts he reminds me I've only met him oh, I've not met him but I've spoke to him a couple of times and I've seen things of him he reminds me so much of Carl I don't know why yeah a straight talker and, and that's I've, I've, that. I've only heard like him on like interviews and stuff and he seems really yeah, cool yeah I, I think so man I think we're going to get on well I, I'm going to have to get him down here I was going to say point. Get, I know, so mate. Cool. I'm so like da, 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 laid back. We'll try and get him on here. I need. To, yes, he would like that. I think that'd as well, be so cool. I've seen him do a podcast a while back. But so basically, I'm under him now, um, and our, our gym's under that that name. Brilliant. And and he's I think got a gym in Tenerife, right? Yes, we I think. Mate, I think over. they're doing great things. I think for what they're this thing they've set up now, I think it looks like a great thing for jujitsu. They're t- trying to take the politics and all the rubbish oh, out brilliant. of it, and I, I think that's what it needs. There's too many. To me, people falling out, you know what I mean? Mm. At the end of the day, we're all on the same boat. We're all on the same journey. Yeah. It, it, it doesn't matter what team you come from. There's, there's good and bad in every team. Yeah, and I think at the end of the day, it's always going to come back down to the character of that person. Are you, if you've got good intentions or bad intentions, are you there to help others or you help yourself? Yeah. And, and, and that's what it will always come back to. So that's it, man. Um, so now I'm... So you got your two stripes. Two stripes. But did you have to have your two stripes in order to no, get the belt? No, the, 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 the belts... Um, Essentially from them to okay. Ryan, but obviously okayed it from me. So I've got it again because I think it's changed again, mate. I I, I just <laughs> I lose track of it. Yeah. I think you now have to be three stripes something. Who cares? Yeah. You, I put you know if you they're good the enough, they're in. good enough. Yeah. It's just it is what it is. So it's always been two stripes. The IBGF decided to change it to three stripes, probably because everyone's catching up now, so they want to keep yeah. control. Who knows? I'm not saying that. No. It just but sort of came out of my mouth and. From somewhere else. Doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, it's an opinion. You're allowed an opinion, man. But um, yeah. So that's that, man. And uh, who we are. Yeah. So just to kind of finish, then that's your journey. Yeah. Flow. Flow. So yes. I'd like to spend like the last ten minutes just on um, how this came about. Mm. Like this is, I mean, it's an unbelievable facility. Everybody who comes in, literally, it's just like Greg wow. Jackson. Greg Jackson came yeah, in. Yeah, Greg so Jackson. He's one of the best gyms I've seen. Unbelievable. Of course. You that. know, and look at that guy. Yeah. You know, top yeah. what UFC coach. So, how did it come about then? So it's you and Darren Hessian. Yes. Um, wow. Very you know, when quickly. I first started training in the early days at Saints, yeah. Darren used to train before me. Wow, really? So he used to come in now and again and teach the class. Wow. So he used to teach me. No way. I know, shocking, right? He's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say that. Um, yeah, so he used to teach me, um, and so Darren went away um, 
he worked for CIA. No, I'm <laughs> he, he, he worked away for a um, good 10, 15 years and came back um, when I was uh, black belt teaching, when okay. I started teaching. Um, and he, he came back and just started training with us again um, and started improving and, and improving. And I think his dream was always to have a gym as well and have a gym where he could train at. Um, and he he offered uh, to set up a gym with, for me. Um, basically, no and the thing the problem with me is that I've always been using other people's gyms. Essentially, I've had mm. my team of students, and I've been going to other gyms around Plymouth. Always end up falling out with them. Um, I have different ideas. Do you know what I mean? Like I've put the time in and, and work in. And I'm not going to have someone else coming in and dictate how that should be done. How you should do it. Yeah. I'm trying to do a good thing. I'm not here to make money no. I'm not here to do all the things I'm here to better other people's lives it's bettered my life I wanted to see it better other people's lives yeah sure so I'm not I'm not going to have that spoil do you know what I mean yeah, that, yeah, that, yeah. that 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 will hold presence over anything mm. and so I've been offered more money for other things and I've turned it down because if it doesn't sit with me it doesn't sit with me no. so I, I I was jumping around other gyms and for a number of legit reasons I I couldn't be working at them gyms morally or ethically or anything like that. There was some problem. So Darren offered uh, to set a gym up with me. Um, wow. And that was pretty much it. So cool. It got bigger than we thought. Um, so and good. I won't even go down that wormhole, but <laughs> it's got a lot bigger than we ever thought Amazing, it was going to be. Um, and it's been hard work, I won't lie. Yeah, it it's been very hard work. Um, the last three years since I left and we was at the squash courts were you there with us at the I wasn't courts? no 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 so no. we had the squash no. courts for about a year was it a year about a year, eight months maybe a year and then we got this place squash and we tried courts to, to here yeah wow. we tried to build this up whilst we were in here because we had mats on the floor mate I'm not I'm not a business savvy kind of guy <laughs> in the slightest and it was tough it's been hard okay. and also on top of that Darren's had to be away a lot more yeah, um, sure. So it, ha it has been really hard, um, and it's, it does drain you a little bit sometimes, you yeah, know. Um, obviously, these days as well, the biggest, the hardest thing is my my back problems. That and not being able to train like I used to, mm. um, that that takes a lot away from me. You know what I mean? Because yeah. it's like I can't do what I enjoy the yeah, most yeah. anymore. Yeah. Um, so it's always about like coaching or business. Um, yeah. So it does get a little bit like, but wouldn't change it for the world you know what I mean yeah. um, I used to work on building sites <laughs> so that you want a real tough job this, that, that stuff's tough but yeah um, amazing that's it man and um, I love the gym I love the people we have so many people that help yeah out and, and do so many good things um, and ultimately this is a community the way I see it you know Definitely. no one's getting rich and stuff it's just like everybody wants a good place to train everybody yeah. wants a good environment and it's here it's great do you know what I mean if you told me and back in the day like when I was in village halls hey if everyone worked together would you like a nice gym I'm like hell yeah. yeah you know what I mean and no, that's looking. what we have yeah and I think like that, like I said you know earlier it, it's about the, the the way that you wanted your gym to be created, the people, the the yeah, ethos, the, the, the family environment, have, yeah. and I think that then breeds helpful, nice, genuine people yeah. to come in and support you and to support Darren and yeah. and I think that you know that that's how a fundamental positive business is run. Yeah, I've I've been in this game for so well, it feels like it's so long, fifteen years, but I've had the luxury. And, the, and blessed by having so many good mentors I've been at so many good gyms and I've been at so many bad ones you know mm. what I mean and I see what works I know what, what, what it's works it's a great what experience I, like I said my great mentors have given me so much many many years of knowledge compact into one yeah. do you know what I mean Brilliant. so it's um, I, I understand this environment inside out it's one of the few things I do understand yeah um, so so I, I try to make sure it's done right. I and I won't, I won't bend it for anyone. No. For any money, any person, Good. it ain't going to get bent. Um, I, I'm stubborn to my views and, and I'm going to stick by it. In the days, I put the work in on the mat, so it's gonna, I'm going to have it run the way I like to have yeah, it run. Sure. You know what I mean? Um, and it's doing all right. You know it's doing I mean? great. It's doing really well. So. so, just to finish, I just want to fire three questions at you. Yes. And I don't want you to think, I just want you to answer. 
Okay. All right. <laughs> you ready? <laughs> so, hardest fight you've ever had? Oh my god. Go. What live in training or sparring or anything? Oh, oh, uh, Ziggy from uh, Munich in Iceland. Okay. Toughest son of a bitch ever. Ziggy. How that guy's not famous? I have no <laughs> Sounds idea. Sounds like Zig and Zach. Yeah, I know. It feels like you've been Zig and Zach when you roll with him. <laughs> Toughest role in the history of human beings. Wow. I see him, my heart drops. Oh, I forgot to mention Chris Sherrington as well, but. We'll leave there. that for a sec. I think Ziggy's harder. <laughs> so there yeah. we go. Ziggy versus Chris Sherrington. That's that's a fight you can set up. Yes. Be, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think I don't want to think Ziggy's training that much more. He went off to be a solicitor or a lawyer last I heard. What? Yeah. So he's he can a chip beast. people in the court. He was like 14 when I started training. He'd come through and he's like just he's like a larger version of me <laughs> with less brains. It's dangerous, man. I was <laughs> walking. So so Ziggy from yeah, Iceland's your hardest fight. Um, best competition you've ever won? Oh. Uh, it uh, um, doesn't have to be a big one, but something that was important to you. Oh my god! Uh, uh, First one that pops into your head. One I lost. Okay. One I lost. I lost um, two. Uh, one to um, a guy, actually the same guy, Claudio Silva. I beat him once. Okay. Actually, that's probably Did the he best. Did you not fight in the UFC? Yes. He he was. I think he was a black belt, and I was a blue belt. Wow. And I and, I got, and he was like killing everyone. And this comp, I just first comp I went to or second. I was like, everyone's like watching this guy. He's like a legit like rare black belt in the country. Yeah. And I remember I swept him. I jumped to his back and I squeezed like I never squeezed. I remember Carl Towns was right in front of me, squeeze, <laughs> and he tapped. And then we fought years later, and he beat me. No, he beat me on points or, or ref's decision or something. Just he 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 was a good one. But I actually um, fought a guy uh, called. Sinistro, and also another guy called Charles, I always forget his name. Negromonte. Negromonte. <laughs> well, Two really tough guys that had done really well against. In the tournaments, which tournament? Um, Can you remember? One was the Pan Ams, oh, yeah. Nogi, and the other one was um, London Open, I believe, cool. IBGF London Open. Wow. So I fought them. So that, big, I, think, I think Charles was my last time I ever competed. Wow. And my back started hurting and stuff, So, but he, he, he was... He was a good one because he, he's world champion or something now. Yeah. yeah, man. Some good good players there. You know what I mean? And, and Sinisha was tough. Amazing. Sinisha was one of the strongest people I ever rolled with. Really? He's ridiculous. Really? Yeah. I have no idea. And I think you've answered this already, but I was just going to say who was, was kind of your idol growing up. And I think you already answered it. Yeah, BJ Penn yeah, was some. BJ Penn. M- Didn't massive. he get his black belt in like three years yes. or something ridiculous? Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. And I think he won the worlds in three or four years or something. Jeez. Yeah, he was. I used to love watching BJ Penn. And it's yeah, just amazing. a shame to see the amazing. way he's gone down now. Do you think there's an element of you're at your point, don't carry on fighting? And this is the element. You only have so much gunpowder to burn. Yeah. And you see not, it like in boxing as well, don't you? Yeah, man. Those it's boxers not, who have it's like, not just a physical. It's Ray Relly is it a physical thing? It's, even. it's a mental thing. Yeah. You can only do something for so long before it doesn't have the same energy that it had before. Yeah. Well, you I mean, don't look have at the Muhammad same. Ali, like, yeah, you don't have that same excitement to want to prove. Losing his yeah. fights. You want it, when you're when you're up and coming, you're fresh and you have those skill and talent, and you want to prove to the world who you are. Yeah. That's a different energy to sustaining who sustaining who you are. Yeah. I think Conor talked about it sometimes like you know a lot of people train to get good and they get good so quick and then once they get good they never get any better because yeah. they just train to maintain Yeah, and that, that's so true you should always try to learn I, I always try to learn man don't ever think you're the, the, the best guy in the room always no. pretend you're the white belt and then yeah, sure. then you're going to keep learning you know but well, was that three questions? Yeah, that's my three questions. Another one. I so like it that. was. So it was. Do another uh, one. Give me another fight. one. Give me another one. Another one. Yeah, uh, one. Jordan, will give us one. Something that's popped in your head. That's gonna be a. So we've had strongest, hardest fight. We had or strongest, uh, hardest opponent. We've had uh, the tournaments, and we've had um, idol. His idol. Any more? <laughs> it's hard on the spot, isn't it? That's why I thought about it. Oh, I got one more. Go on. If you could change yeah. anything yeah. in your jiu-jitsu life, we'll keep it. We'll keep it um, without you going off on tangents about yeah. someone or something in your life. If you could change something to help you, not necessarily develop quicker because you did that really quick, yeah. but if there's something that sticks in your mind, you just think, actually, I wish. I kind of did that or knew that a little bit more. When I, I was wish younger. I wish I didn't push myself so much. Okay. I wish I didn't. Um, I wish I listened to some other coach, Carl, and that. 
I wish I warmed up. I wish I cooled down. Right. I wish I'd done all the right things. I used to go in, go hard. Whether it's drilling, whatever. Mm -hmm. Even if it's drilling, it would be like over the top drilling. It would be too yeah. much drilling, or it would be too much rolling. I used to roll with a guy called Luke Costello and then Tom, and yeah, it'd yeah. all be tough rolls each day, two hours of time it's times three each, and then do a class. It'd be like four to six hours a day. It was too much. Yeah, right. it was too much. And, and now I'm. So you just wish you had someone who could have frozen you in that time and gone in and say, "Look, buddy, I'm yeah. going to quickly show you a snapshot of what's going to happen in the future." Yeah. And then yeah, I, you got to look after your body. Yeah, that's that's important. All right, one more. Yeah, something just popped in my head. Yeah. Go on. Um, but now I forgot it. Um, come on, Andy. I know. Come on, Andy. Uh, it's because I went. I didn't have those questions planned in my head. Um, you said about. Oh, um, best your favorite go-to submission. Oh God. Is there a go-to submission? No, but I love getting the back. The back? The back. Yeah. I don't have to look at you then. I don't have to look at you whilst <laughs> I kill you. You know what I mean? It's, I don't so like, from I don't there, like, is it like eye naked, contact whilst I kill people? Bar, bow and arrow? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the back, you don't have to deal with it. You're taking away all their strengths, you know. And yeah. If you're against a big guy, that's where you want to get to, you know. Yeah. Um, it's your aim. That's the aim. I've got a question for you. What do you like about jiu-jitsu? What's your number one thing? Um... The uh, thought-provoking kind of game it brings in. Nice. So you're constantly thinking. Another one. What do you like about the gym? Number one thing, favourite thing about the gym? The people. Nice, like that. And let's plug the Devon Open, the yeah. JJ Open. Go on, on then. You're uh, the boss. Is it 1st of June? 1st of June, yeah. first of June so guys. First of the June. Devon Open, BJJ. If you want to get used to competing or you just want to give it a go, all levels, we'll be, you'll be paired off against your own level. Give it a crack. Um, yeah, yeah we've really got really good medals. medals. Belts, for Belts. absolute. That's great, guys. Um, that's it. I'll be trying to get some seminars up soon. Um, what Brilliant. Else? Thank ben you very Popton much, Kenny. And all those people, thank you for helping me. And guys, thank you. Cheers, guys. Awesome. Thank you. Hang off the side and just come over the top. Yeah, just keep doing it. Keep doing it. <laughs> Hi guys, um, so we've just finished the first podcast with um, Kenny Baker. Next podcast we are going to be interviewing uh, Kenny's first black belt and hopefully first of many, uh, Ryan Honeyman. Um, hopefully you guys tune. I gave him his black belt. You did. <laughs> Cheers guys. Thank <laughs> you.